All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Wishing you a fantastic 2024 because this is actually, although it will come out in a few weeks, this is the first podcast of the new year. And I'm delighted to welcome as our first guest in 2024 is Baron Damon, who is in lovely North Carolina. How are you doing, Baron? I'm doing fantastic, John. Happy New Year to you, and I'm excited to be here with you today. Absolutely. And Baron is a certified philanthropic coach to the International Coaching Federation with over 20 years' experience as nonprofit executive, currently managing partner of the Business of Life Coaching and Consulting, a service and education company. Uh, you've also coached and trained thousands of people during, his, during your professional career, featured in national magazines, special guests on TV, radio, and podcasts discussing, discussing uh, topics related to philanthropy, business, youth development, and travel. You also host your own podcast, Giving, Giving While Black Podcast, and is the author of Monday Morning Mana. Excellent. And you are the CEO and uh, of BK Damon Foundation and mission to make a difference in the lives of young people and adults through the philanthropic acts of kindness. And what we're going to talk about today is empowering philanthropy, a blueprint for business leaders. So just to just to start out, uh, Baron, you know, as I was uh, you know researching some of this today, uh, one of the things that struck me was, uh, and I think you mentioned this on your website, and that is that when people think of philanthropy, they think kind of, most people think, well, you need to have a ton of money because philanthropy, philanthropic people are the ones with names on buildings who have, you know, millions of dollars to, to invest in their, in their favorite or to donate, should I say, to their favorite charities. Mm -hmm. uh, but give me your, your, uh, give me your definition of philanthropy and why when people think it's just for, it's just a thing for rich people, why that's not true. Yeah, John, you know, that's a great question. And, and I love to answer that question because when you think about philanthropy is a big word. A lot of times when I say I'm a philanthropic coach, people even stumble over it. <laughs> but what, <laughs> what I love about the word is its meaning is simplistic, right? It means the lover of mankind. And so when you think about the word philanthropy, if you go even go to the um, dictionary, it doesn't have anything about you have to be wealthy. Mm hmm. Right? You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be famous. You just have to be a lover of mankind. And that's what philanthropy is really all about. Yeah. And that's such a great, it's perfect. And what a great definition. And you're right. I think maybe sometimes it's the word that, that people struggle, it's the word that people struggle with. But but that's that's a, it's a great point. So so talk to me then about uh, what is some of the work that you've done in order to help people? And how do you how do you help people realize that philanthropy is for everyone? put it that way. Yeah. It, and it starts always with a conversation, mm -hmm. right? Um, because we have to really demystify philanthropy for a lot of people because they really don't understand. The thing that I'm learning, John, is even when you work with wealthy people, people automatically assume that people who have wealth or money, they know exactly what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> that could be no, um, That that's just not true, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, um, if they haven't been exposed to philanthropy, I've had people call me and say, I have millions of dollars to give away, but where do I start? I don't know what to do with it. And we start the process of helping people really discover what their philanthropic why is. Mm -hmm. And that's really important because if we don't have that philanthropic why, we don't know the causes that we want to give to, what we really care about. And we help people really really get to understand what that why is and where it came from. I was talking to someone the other day, I was, as a matter of fact, writing a, an article that's going to be a part of a book. And I said, I discovered my philanthropic why after I got a black eye. <laughs> and, and it was based on a story of when I got mugged as a freshman in college. Oh. And it completely changed my life and my trajectory. John, I definitely didn't want to get in philanthropy. I was probably one of the most selfish people you want to meet. I was a nice guy, but mm -hmm. all I cared about was just making some, you know, making some money, mm -hmm. uh, driving a nice car and have a big house. But after I got that black eye and it changed my, my, my vision as I'm wearing glasses today, it changed my eyesight, but my vision became very clear on what I wanted to do with my life 
and that is to help people understand what philanthropic giving was all about. Yeah, though that's a that's a great uh, and, and and a great illustration il illustration as well. So, um, give me a few examples, uh, Baron. Uh, you don't have to name them or whatever. Just sort of examples of different types of philanthropy from different levels, right? So, say from person who doesn't have that much money or whatever, or but but wants to do something meaningful, right up to somebody who has a lot of money. Yeah, I'll give her an example because I, I love to use our own kind of um, scenario. And we have a foundation called the BK Damon Foundation. And I remember when we first started, my wife and I was talking about this the other day, and she received a bonus from work. Um, she works at a technology company, and we took that money of $5,000, and we said, we're going to invest it into a donor advised fund. $5,000, John, is not a lot of money, but we discovered that $5,000 can make a difference in the lives of people. So when you think about it, um, we probably gave to 15 to 20 different charities um, on that $5,000. Um, I'll give you an example. We had a young man that was a part of our leadership program, um, and he was um, a Hispanic young man, and he was very bright, probably had a four- 849 GPA, okay. and he was undocumented and didn't think he was going to be able to go to college. And interestingly enough, we were um, talking with him and trying to encourage him, and he was just really down on himself. He said, I worked so hard academically, but now I'm not going to be able to go to college. We decided to give him what we call the Make a Difference Scholarship, and it was amazing. It was $500, not a lot of money, but it gave him hope. So we called it the Scholarship of Hope. That young man received the $80,000 scholarship to Tuff University, um, one of the great universities here in the United States. And he was off and running. And so you multiply 80 times four years, and that's how much money he received in scholarship money. But it was that one scholarship for $500 that we gave him that really gave him hope. Um, that he can solicit other scholarships. Yeah, and, and before you go on to the bigger dollar one, that I think that's such a great story for people to understand, like how how something that five hundred dollars it's a lot of money to some to some people, um, but a, a a relatively small amount of money could have that outsized impact, and I think that's what people probably don't realize. Yeah, a a absolutely, and and I've worked with people who were able to give $10,000 gifts. You know, I worked with several people who um, $10,000 is, is a good investment um, when you're talking about strategic planning for mm -hmm. uh, philanthropic giving. And being able to help them discover what their philanthropic why is, and for them to be able to strategically place that money um, in places and causes they really cared about. And so we've worked with um, quite a few people on that level as well. And, and the good thing about it is you can determine what you want to give and how you want it to give and who you want to give it to. A lot of times, John, you may have been in this situation before too, when um, someone asks you to support a nonprofit. You yeah. know, can you support something that I care about? You don't care about it, but <laughs> um, someone else cares about it. And they're a good friend or family member. And that's all good because I've done the same thing. But it's great when there's causes that we actually care about that make a difference in our lives. Yeah. Um, one, of the, one of the things I, I think, and, it, and it's interesting uh, that you kind of alluded to, the, one, one of the things I think that, um, that often people about being or holds them back from being philanthropic or charitable and any or anything like that is is that not being able to really see the impact of what they're doing or not having visibility into what their money is used for you know i mean a lot of people have said that they'll see all these um you know not for profits or whatever but if you ever look at their their statements or their their accounts like you know 90 percent of the money is tied up in an administration and very little of it is going to the so uh, you know how do you how do you advise or help people to you know choose the right places to put their money where it'll have maximum impact as opposed to putting it where it may have minimal yeah i, I was listening to actually to one of your podcasts i think it was with chase um yeah. Hammer, uh, a, a few weeks ago and he talked about his platform and it's difficult for people to understand um impact 
And yeah. that's why we really teach people, empower people to learn as much as you can about the nonprofit. We actually put a donor report together. Um, we do all the research for um, our clients and then we meet with them and have these coaching sessions where we're able to decipher that information for them because if they're um, more empowered with information, they're also yeah. more engaged. Um, and if you're engaged, you're going to know the impact that that organization is making. It's, if there's a disconnect, you you just will, will never know. But you can also go to the 990s. One of the things that we do is the part of the research, we look at the 990s and we can tell a lot about that particular organization that maybe they have chosen. And we'll let that client know, hey, this is where the money is actually going to. Mm -hmm. It's a public entity. So that information is, is readily available for you. Yeah. And then uh, talk to me a little bit about, uh, you say, you, you mentioned here about purposeful giving. Yeah. Um, can you just define purposeful giving as opposed to just, you know, just giving with, without too much thought? Yeah, yeah. Um, purposeful giving is really the foundation of your your decision making, right? It's it's an intentionality that you have, a decisiveness and an approach to giving. So when we think about um, purposeful giving, we are talking about that philanthropic why that I mentioned earlier. And once people discover that, it automatically puts them in a place where they're thinking about it differently. Their mindset has actually changed and they're becoming more purposeful. We also help them create a mission and a vision, um, a vision statement. So as we add this mission, this vision statement, and this strategic plan for them, it automatically begins to become more purposeful. And then we help them align it with their deepest values. So whatever they really care about, we wanna be able to match what they care about and the money that they're giving. And then that personal fulfillment that comes with it. Um, if it's purposeful philanthropy, it's also personal fulfillment. And then lastly, um, identifying those issues, like I said, that that you really care about, um, that you can be proud of, that you're making that donation and not one of those things where you just check in the box just because someone asked you to. Yeah. 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 Or to get your uh, to get your deduction. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. That's right. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what, what are some of the, what are some of the, uh, causes that you, that you work with just out of interest? Like what, what are the different cross section of opportunities for people to become philanthropic? Yeah, I, th that's a good question, John, because there's so many, what we call issue areas out mm -hmm. there. Um, and one of the things, you know, when we look, when we break it down, um, youth, development. That's something that we, we personally um, invest in. And you know this, I use the word invest. Um, youth development, probably um, probably about 27, 28 percent nationally goes to something like um, youth development. Education is a big thing. As you were mentioned earlier about having someone's name on the building, people give a lot of money to universities. Um, we're in an area where we have Duke University and um, University of North Carolina, NC State, and these endowments are just unbelievable, um, the money that they have in these endowments. But education is a big one. Um, one that we see a lot more even now are pets. Um, people are given to um, pet organizations kind of, mm -hmm. kind of left and right, and then social causes as well. Um, is high on that list as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a, it, it's a, you're, as you say, I mean, there's so many out there. And I think that's the problem with um, sometimes with this whole, you know, not for profit. It's easy to sort of say, well, we're not for profit. And then um, it kind of muddies the water a little bit for everybody else. I mean, I think there's been such an explosion of people opening, you know, non profit, yeah. not for profits. And like you said, uh, uh, so working, I guess one of the main advantages of working with somebody like you is that if I go and do this randomly on my own, I, I mean, I could end up, sure, I could end up, you know, giving plenty of money to places, but maybe I end up giving them to the wrong places. Maybe it's it's not the great investment. Maybe it's used differently, whatever. No. Um, but it seems to me one of the big values here is that if I'm working with you, I can really get 
down to the nitty gritty of what this is, whether it aligns with how I, but uh, that's the other thing too, is when you do something at face value, you don't actually know at the end of the day, whether it really yeah. aligns with your values. So yeah, I guess right. these are, these are all things that you can help to make sure that the money goes to the right place. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll tell you a quick story, how yeah. I got involved. I, I've been thinking about, um, I was in the nonprofit sector for, for 20 plus years and in kind of charitable giving from a grassroots perspective. But about a year ago, I was traveling. We were in Portugal having a great time. And a wealth advisor from New York called me. Well, he, he sent me an email. He said, um, Baron, I was looking over um, some information online and I came across your, your information. He said, I want to see if you were available for a podcast. And I was like, Ab absolutely. He said, I can't find many people like you that's a philanthropic coach that can help. And he said, matter of fact, I've been thinking about giving, you know, for a while. And he said, but I don't know where to start. And I said, Michael, why do you don't know where to start? There's only 1.5 million um, nonprofits out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And that's no exaggeration. That's a real statistic. Um, so it, it was um, the conversations that we were having with each other um, was was how do we start this process? where people feel you know, really comfortable um, and it's fun. How do we engage family members? Um, John, I read a statistic earlier today and it was saying that financial advisors really don't talk about um, philanthropy with their children. It's usually just with the donors themselves, but we like to engage the family around philanthropy mm -hmm. as well, which is um, also something I recommend. Yeah. And are there, um, I mean, depend, depending on what you're looking for, are there opportunities to be more hands-on involved with some than others, uh, just depending on what your taste is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, organizations are always looking for volunteers. And matter of fact, I've, I've had um, clients say, well, Baron, I want to be on the board of directors for a nonprofit organization. And I said, sure, but that's not your initial aim. Now you can volunteer with the organization, get to know that organization, let them get to know you because they just don't give out board seats and that's mm -hmm. not a part of what their mission is, but that's a good goal in terms of you getting to know the organization and really uh, feel comfortable supporting. A lot of times you have board members that come onto an organization and they really don't trust the organization. And so when the organization, when the leadership asks them, say, can you connect me to some of your friends? They're like, mm, I don't know about that, um, but you're on the board. So yep. it lets you know that people have to really spend some time investing and in getting to know the organizations and the leadership of those organizations. Because I was an executive um, at a nonprofit we wanted that kind of engagement because we knew the more engaged they were the more money they would donate yeah no that's a that's a great that's a great point and then just just finally um what would your advice be to just to anyone who's 2024 people start to think about everything or maybe i want to do something a little bit different uh, maybe I want to start uh, my philanthropic journey what, what would you say is, is is the first step of putting one foot in front of the other I would say the first step is research. I mean, spend some time. I, I was having a conversation with the CEO of a foundation last week, and she said, Baron, it's an afterthought for many people. Um, they don't think about it. A lot of times we're talking about very successful business owners, mm -hmm. people who are, um, are, are just very busy, but we live in a time where everyone is really busy these days. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say the first step is, is do the research. And I always tell people, find someone that can help you. Just like a wealth advisor, you don't do that on your own. Mm -hmm. Just like an attorney, you don't do that on your own. Just like a, a, a tax um, person, you don't do that on your own. And so find somebody that can help you because we actually work together with financial advisors and attorneys um, and tax accountants and all of that um, to make sure you have a really good plan and strategy. And one of the things that a financial advisor told me, he said, Baron, this is not what we do. We can partner with you to help us um, make sure our client is getting all the value that they need. So do the research and also find somebody that can help. 
Now, in terms of vehicles, we didn't talk about that, but donor advised funds is one of the fastest growing vehicles that people have um, related to philanthropic giving. And there's a little controversy uh, around it, but it's a great place to start. That's what we did with the $5,000. We put it in a donor advised fund and we were able um, to start making donations quickly. They handle all the back office mm -hmm. stuff. So you don't have to worry about keeping up with at the end of the year, um, you get all your tax documents and information that you need and you, you, you'll be good to go. Yeah, listen, fantastic. Well, listen, I think it's there's never a better time to start with your philanthropic efforts than today. So I would encourage you to check out Baron and his work. All of Baron's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Baron, please do tell us a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, we we really help people um, live their legacy now. I used to use the language legacy and people, you know, thinking, man, I got to die. <laughs> in order to, to leave leave money. And pe we know people want to work and help their family. It, we understand that. But there's a community out there that really needs your help. And so what we do is help uh, people create this living legacy that aligns with their giving, um, their values through strategic giving. And we help you create your mission and your vision, I mean, your strategic plan. We do a whole donor report for you that will absolutely blow you away and it will empower you to be able to make the right decision. And when uh, we call a nonprofit and connect um, them together, the nonprofit will be, they'll just be like, wow, you know, this, they are, they know so much information. Mm -hmm. um, and we, you can't pull the wool over their eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They already know what's going on. And we work for the donor and make sure they have all the information that they need. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Baron, and thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Appreciate it.